Stevenson and I'm the new student leader for Miss George's class. I'm going to read two books. The first one is Trains Go. The freight train goes squeak, clang, ting, bang, bang. The steam the steam miner goes woo, 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 woo. <laughs> the mountain train goes trip, trap, fluff, puff, trip, trap, fluff, puff, trip, trap, fluff, puff. The speed train goes whoosh. The old steam train goes clang, 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 toot, toot. The diesel train goes swoosh, 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 ding, ding, ding. The big steam train goes chugga, 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 choo, choo. The caboose goes clickety clack, clickety clack, clickety clack, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> now we're going to read Arnie the Donut. That's me, Arnie the Donut. They're out there again. Ban the donut. Donuts cause cavities. Bang. A thank you song for Christy to be sung to a tune by Rick James. That girl is pretty thinky. The girl is super sweet. She is really good at spelling big words like obsolete. She's all right and rewrite. And that's all right with me. She is an edit freak, an edit freak. This super edits you. And he turned out to be just the kind of donut he hoped he'd be. Chocolate covered with bright colored candy sprinkles. Look at all my sprinkles. There must be a million of them. Actually, there's only 100. And 35, but I'm not going to spoil it for him. He was made very early in the morning at the downtown bakery, the home of the best donuts around. Annie was proud to be one of the best. He knew that people all over town made special tips for his bakery to buy donuts of their very own. As Arnie sat the sat the tray which had just been placed in the donut case he took a moment to reflect on the amazing things that had happened to him that morning one cut into a ring Whee! two deep fried ouch quit it i'm soaking i'm boiling grease but i love it three cool your drink sir thanks I remember that. <laughs> Four, iced. Hold still. Who's that handsome donut? Five, sprinkled. That tickles. Caution, sprinkle area must wear safety goggles. Three, named. But either I'm named, I'm going to go by cool iced. I like it. Arnie. Arnie looked around and saw all sorts of donuts sitting nearby. He tried to strike up a conversation with Apple Fritter on the train next over, but she see, she didn't seem to want to talk. How about that deep fryer? Any relation to Larry Fritter? Want to count my sprinkles? It's rather early. Maybe she's not a morning donut. 
Arnie supposed. It was 6 a.m. The baker had just opened, hung the open side in the window. Arnie was fascinated as he, wa as he watched customers stream into the bakery. One by one, donuts were chosen, placed in paper bags, and whisked away with their new owners. Some went by the dozen giant boxes. Number 105. Goodbye, Arnie, yelled to each donut. Have a great trip. This is so exciting. I wonder who will choose me. Just then, Arnie looked up and saw a man pointing at him. Before he could say another word, he was pulled from the tray and placed in a paper bag of his very own. Thank you, Mr. Bing. Have a nice day. Arnie heard the baker say to the man, Mr. Bing, that's a fine name, Arnie decided. I can hardly wait to meet him. The grand exit that Arnie's imagining. Goodbye, Arnie. The ride to Mr. Bing's apartment was a little bumpy. Arnie was Grateful for the soft napkin the baker had had so thoughtfully placed underneath him in the bag. He had never ridden in a car. He wished he could look out the window to see all the sights. But more than anything, he wished he could meet Mr. Bing. Why does he keep me in this bag? Arnie wondered. Bumps and lumps, clumps of bumps. Finally, the car came to a stop. And they were home. Mr. Bing carefully removed Arnie on a clean, shiny plate. What a, what a handsome plate, Arnie said to himself. I'm not crazy about the design. I prefer a more modern look. But it's nothing a little paint can fix. Mr. Bing gently lifted Arnie from his new plate. Isn't that cute, thought Arnie, as he closed his eyes and smiled. He wants to hold me. As Arnie relaxed in Mr. Bing's hands, he felt himself moving higher and higher away from his plate. When he opened his eyes to see where he was going, he discovered that he was headed straight for Mr. Bing's Open mouth! What are you doing, shouted Arnie. Mr. Bing was stunned. He dropped Arnie back into the plate. I was going to eat you, he replied in shock. Eat me, Arnie shrieked, his sprinkles flying everywhere. Why would you do a thing like that? Do you make a habit of eating all your house guests? No. Of course not. So then why did it suddenly occur to you to eat me? Arnie demanded. Well, because you're a donut. That's why donuts, that's what donuts are for, to eat. You mean to tell me you've done this before? Yes, I eat donuts every day, Mr. Bing said. She pushed away. Arnie froze. He felt sick and frightened and angry. He thought to himself for a moment, I must put a stop to this right away. I'll call the baker, bakery and warn the others. Whoever's left, that is. Arnie knew that there was no time to waste and that he needed to be very sneaky. In order to keep his plan from Mr. Bing, he turned to Mr. Bing and said in his sweetest voice, excuse me, Sol, but I don't believe we've been properly introduced. My name is Arnie. Um, 
Hello, Arnie. Mr. Bing stammered. I'm Mr. Bing. It's nice to eat you. I mean, meet you. Mr. Bing, would you be a dear and allow me to use your telephone? Arnie asked extra politely. Okay. Oh, well, okay, said Mr. Bing, and he handed Arnie the phone. As quickly as he could, Arnie dialed the number of the bakery. The baker answered the phone. Downtown bakery, home of the best. Mr. Baker, man, Arnie frequently whispered to me. This is Arnie the dinner. Do you remember me? You made me at 5.15 this morning, and I was bought about 20 minutes ago by a man who goes by the name of Mr. Bing. Yes, Arnie, the baker answers. What can I do for you? Now, I want... I don't want to alarm you, but just moments ago, that man tried to eat me. And not only that, he claims to have eaten hundreds of us. I'm going to make a run for it, but I wanted to warn you so that if you see him coming to the bakery again, you can stop him. Oh my, Arnie, I thought you understood. That's why I make donuts for people to eat. I can't believe it, Arnie gasped. Are the other donuts aware of this angerment? Well, I think so, the baker said. Let me ask them to make sure. Popped up eyebrow sprinkles. <laughs> Showing signs of donut shock. The baker yelled to the other donuts. Do you donuts know that you're going to be eaten? Yes, we know the donuts, shouted back. We're delicious. Did you hear that, Arnie? The baker asked. Arnie was crushed. The phone dropped from his hand. He heard all he needed to hear. Arnie forgot all about his plan to escape. He collapsed back onto the plate. And glanced out at the wood. And muttered. All right then, let's get this over with. Go ahead and eat me. Mr. Bing gazed down at Arnie. I'm not going to eat you, he said. Really? I wouldn't feel right about it. Really? Arnie said with a huge sign of relief. Well, I'm glad to see that you come to your senses. But since I'm not going to eat you, Mr. Bing continued, I have to figure out something else to do with you. I paid good money for you. I don't want to be wasteful. Of course not, Arnie agreed. But we need to do, what we need to do is, is each make a list of things I can do instead of eating you between the two of us. I know we'll come up with something. Good plan, Mr. Bing, Arnie said. This will be a breeze. I bet I'm good at lots of stuff. They both feverishly wrote down their ideas. When they were finished, Mr. Bing asked, Would you like to read yours first? Sure thing, Mr. Bing, Arnie answered. Things Mr. Bing can do with me instead of eating me. Do you need a, a ballroom partner? Uh, I don't know. I don't dance. How about a portrait painter? Oh, heaven, no. Could you use a personal fitness trainer? Mm, I get too sweaty. Would you like me to entertain at your parties? I don't like throwing parties. Could I be your... Chauffeur. Chauffeur? Look out for that tree. But you can't see over the steering wheel. Relax. I'd make a great bodyguard. That's close enough, ma'am. Who could you protect from me? A cookie? All right. All righty, Mr. Bing. Let's hear what you came up with. Okie dokie, he replied. 
I just know you'll like some of these. I could use you as a function. Ooh, too painful. Would you like to be a picture of her? I don't imagine so. How about an air freshener for my car? How about not? I need a new bowling ball. Well, don't look at me. You'd make a fine paperweight. Boring. Then what about a doorstep? Try again. But there was nothing else Mr. Bing on Mr. Bing's list. They were both completely out of ideas. Arnie and Mr. Bing were exhausted. They felt terribly disappointed after a few minutes of alert silence. Mr. Bing finally spoke. I'm sorry, Arnie, but it's clear that we can't agree on anything for you to do around here. This is difficult for me to say, but I think it would be best if you found another home. I know, Arnie. Fighting back tears. I'll just be on my way. Is all right. Is it all right if I keep the napkin to pack up all my little sprinkles? Of course, Mr. Ring replied sadly. As soon as I get a job, I'll pay you back the money I spent. You spent on me. That's necessary, Arnie. That's not necessary, Arnie. Arnie shook Mr. Bing's hand and thanked him for his kindness. Mr. Bing opened the door as Arnie left. He paused and said, I guess donuts really are only good for eating, aren't they? They both waved goodbye. Arnie was gone. Mr. Bing stood at the window and watched as Arnie walked away. He walked past the flower beds, mailboxes, apartment managers, his office. He passed the tennis court, swimming pool, and the clubhouse. But then, when Arnie reached the No Dogs Alarm sign, at the end of the driveway, Mr. Bing suddenly came with a new idea. Arnie, Arnie, wait up! yelled Mr. Bing as he ran after him. Arnie turned back and stopped. When Mr. Bing caught up with him, he was out of breath. I can't believe I didn't think of this earlier. Mr. Bing painted Arnie. I've always wanted a dog, and I could never have one because they're not allowed here. But there's no line that says no donuts allowed. Arnie perked up when he realized that Mr. Bing, what Mr. Bing was thinking. Would you like to take walks, play fetch, and play fetch? Mr. Bing asked excitedly. You bet I would. Can you do tricks like rolling over, rolling over? Look at me, I was made for rolling over. Well, then there's only one thing to do to ask Arnie. Will you be my donut dog? Oh, Mr. Bing, I would love to be your donut dog. From that moment on, Arnie and Mr. Bing were inseparable. Arnie liked being a donut dog even better than he liked being a donut. Even though a short phase of chewing on furniture and barking at the mailman, but after a cracked course of obedience school, he graduated in his first class. Everywhere the two of them went, people would stop and pet Arnie. No one had ever seen a donut dog before. Arnie and Mr. Bing had so much fun together. Arnie was the best pet Mr. Bing could ever have hoped for. And Mr. Bing was Arnie's best friend.